member for Perth. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. On the 8th of August 2022, Australia and indeed the world learned of Olivia Newton-John's passing. And uh, while we recognise her great contribution as an Australian artist, she was an Australian artist who had an impact the world over. Born in Cambridge, England, uh, but emigrated to Melbourne as a young child. Uh, I learnt this in researching for this, she went to primary school with Dal Braithwaite, uh, another Aussie talent. Um, and it was in these early years of Aussie education that she was drawn to performing. And uh, so many of us are so fortunate that she was. Her talent took her across Europe with a range of different joint and solo acts. But it was in 1978 that she took the role of Sandy in the film adaptation of the musical Grease. That changed her life and it changed cinema and it was also such a huge moment for Australians seeing an Australian accent in a big budget uh, blockbuster film. Grease became the biggest box office hit of 1978. The soundtrack was arguably even bigger. And then from that film forward, Olivia's image was known across the world. Her musical career then transitioned in the 1980s. Xanadu, uh, which uh, uh, draws strong opinions in this place. Um, the musical fantasy film <laughs> baptised a decade that year of 1980 uh, was one, one contribution, but it was the double platinum album, the breakthrough album Physical, which really cemented her status as an international pop icon. Uh, she managed to get that song banned by two Utah radio stations during the peak of its popularity. Um, something that uh, artists have to try a lot harder to be, have their music banned today. Um, she was uh, a well-known Carlton supporter and proudly, uh, clearly one of her most uh, proud achievements was to perform at the 1986 VFL Grand Final between Carlton and Hawthorne. Uh, and then her life changed again in, in 1992 when she was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, she would be, um, take that in her stride and become globally known as an advocate for uh, people affected by breast cancer and for, uh, in large part, she did drive large investments in breast cancer research. She knew the grief, she knew the illness and connected so deeply with many Australians who were going through that uh, grief and illness themselves and again touch the lives of so many but particularly touch the lives of people here in Australia. Um, I just want to share a few of her reflections on uh, some of those iconic moments I've mentioned um, which is um, she talked about Greece, the success of Greece and uh, in that she said um, quote the young kids are rediscovering it every 10 years or so it seems. And uh, that definitely has been true uh, over the 44 years that that film has been out in the public. And I'm sure for every 10 years or so for the future, that film will continue to be rediscovered and people will read it in different ways from how it was when it was first written. But it still is one of those great iconic musicals with a uniquely Australian flavour. And then on her illness, uh, she reflected, quote, my cancer scare changed my life. I'm grateful for every new healthy day I have. It has helped me prioritise my life. And again, uh, prioritise her life she did. She chose to be an advocate for people who were um, experiencing illness. She chose to be an advocate, recognising that we could do so much more for those who are suffering from breast cancer. And she chose to be an advocate that that doesn't have to be the norm, that through research and through investment, philanthropic business and government, we can start to shift the dial on that disease that still to this day affects too many. Thank you, Deputy Speaker.